section section 3.3. So, in fact, let me start out this way with a problem that, you know, you don't even have to copy it out. Just, I just want you to, to think about it for a second. If you take 40, uh, 43 and divide it by 6, what are you going to get? Well, you're, it's going to go in there evenly to a point. 43 divided by 6, 7 times, 42. So it goes in 6 times with a remainder of 1, right? Or in other words, you can write 43 as being 6 times 7. Oh, pardon me, 7. So 7 times 6 plus your remainder. And that's what the problems, uh, some of the first problems are going to ask you to do, is write that using, or write a quotient of polynomials like that. So we're going to start with, uh, you know, we're going to start with synthetic division and then move up to problem number 10. Because synthetic division is a nice, quick way to do your division problems. Now, if, if you're familiar with long division, my condolences. It's not a lot of fun. Here's long division of polynomials. It's, it's a real beastly problem. I might go back and cover that. If I do, great. If not, then I'm sure it'll be much the happier. But... If you compare, if you look at long division carefully enough, when you're dividing by x minus a number or x plus a number, then there's some shortcuts. And that shortcut is called synthetic division. So how does synthetic division work? Well, let me explain. And try and catch on quickly because this is supposed to be review, and I'm hoping that it is, but if it's not, then, um, like I said, try and catch on quickly. Let's start with problem number 30. 3x squared minus, or excuse me, 3x cubed minus 12x squared minus 9x plus 1 divided by x minus 5. Well, you could do this by long division, but short division or synthetic division is so much nicer. And you get some extra bonuses out of it this way. So the first thing you have to do is change this sign. So if, I, if I'm dividing by a minus 5, it's going to be a plus 5 out in front. If this was a plus 5, I'd put a minus 5 here. Underneath this, you're going to write the coefficients. 3, negative 12, negative 9, and 1. Leave yourself a line of space. In fact, on that line, right underneath the 3, we can put a 0. Because synthetic division is going to work by a series of adds and multiplies. You're going to add to go down and multiply to go up. So how does this all work? Well, let me give you a second to catch up. And then let's, let's rock this one. 3 and 0 gives me a 3. Multiply to go up. So 5 times 3 gives me 15. And then this process repeats. Add to go down. Gives me another 3. 5 times 3 gives me 15 again. 6, 30, and 31. So that last term, yeah, darn it, that last term is your remainder. Okay, now what are all these terms? Well, that represents your quotient, and an important part of the problem for you is to figure out, well, what does that mean? This is your constant term. This is your coefficient of x. That's your coefficient of x squared. If there were more, it'd be your coefficient of x cubed, x to the fourth, etc. It increases from right to left, just like you'd read in Arabic, from right to left. Now, that tells me that when I divide this by this, I end up with 3x squared plus 3x plus 6. Now, the last term is your remainder, so put it over the divisor, 31 over x minus 5. 
So there's your quotient. There's your remainder. Now, um, Let's take a look at one last one like this, problem number 38. Yeah, go ahead, please. It's just the way this thing works. Um, when you're doing synthetic division, this process, underneath this first term is always going to go zero. Always. The rest of them come from the multiplication process. So these all came from the multiplication process. But that first one is a zero. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's your final answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. What happens if I multiply this by x minus 5? Do I get the same thing back? And the answer is yes. So let's see that. Um, and this is going to be a little bit lengthier than you want because you're, you're, you're leading into uh, – that's okay. <laughs> um, but you're leading into something called uh, the factor theorem and uh, the remainder theorem. But let's take a look at what would happen if I multiplied this by x minus 5. So if I multiply this by x minus 5, on the left-hand side of this, I'll distribute this. I'll get 3x squared plus 3x plus 6 times x minus 5. But how about when I multiply these two together? Yeah, I get plus 31. So if I multiply these two together, I should get what I started with, which was up here in the numerator. And let me just show that. 3x uh, squared plus 3x plus 6. When I'm all done, then I'll add the 31. The trick is when you multiply this to write like terms together. So I'll distribute the x, I get these terms. When I distribute the 5, I get minus 15x squared minus 15x minus 30. And then I have my plus 31 over here. If I combine like terms, I get 3x cubed minus 12x squared minus 9x minus 30 plus 31. But guess what? Those are like terms. Uh, minus 1. No, plus 1. Perfect. And that's what uh, we divided into originally. So it checks very nicely. Okay. One thing that, does, that this gives us is another way to write this polynomial. So if I call that polynomial P of X... I could also write it as x minus 5 times 3x squared plus 3x plus 6 plus 31. And that may seem kind of harmless. You're like, well, big deal. And what does that give me? And what that gives you is a quick way to evaluate this function at a different point. In particular, um, I'll race you. If I have p of x equals this, can anyone tell me what p of 5 is? What would happen if I put in a 5 into this function here or into the function here? Well, let's take a look at it here. What's 5 minus 5? Does it matter what's in here? I'll have 0 times this, right, which is still 0. What will I get? P of 5 is 31. So that's kind of cool. It's a nice trick. If you want to find the value of a function at some point, a polynomial function, you can just do synthetic division with that number. Take a look. P of 5 is 31. You don't have to really remember this and do all this. If you want to know what P of 5 is, just do synthetic division. And boom, you've got it right there. That's going to be your P of 5. 
Let's try that again. It'll be a practice of synthetic division and what's called the remainder theorem. So, for instance, problem number 40. So, our function is p of x equals 2x squared plus 9x plus 1, and they want you to find p of 1 half. So p of 1 half would be kind of a pain because uh, you have to plug in the 1 half and uh, you're going to get uh, numbers and fractions, blah, blah, blah. But let's do it by synthetic division. By synthetic division, I want to list all the coefficients. So the coefficients here would be 2, 9, and 1. Uh, Kenny, what number goes underneath the 2 here? Zero. 0. So if I add going down, I get a 2. What number comes up here, Alan? 1. Thank you. If I add going down, I get a 10. Multiply, I get a 5. Add going down, 6. Yay. Okay, yeah. So, P of 1 half is 6. Yay. So, kind of cool. There's this nice correspondence here. And what I want you to see is some practice between synthetic division and a little bit more with the factor theorem. So, where this becomes really useful is if this number here is 0. If you find a number that when you put it in, gives you a 0. Because then you can really start getting a grip on your polynomials. So let's see what that happens. Problem number 54. So our polynomial is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x minus 10. And they want us to use the fact that c equals 2 is somehow our factor or a root. And let's see about that. If this is a root, that means when I put it in here, I'm going to get 0 as my value. And let's see if that's true. And if I get a 0, that's really going to help me out in terms of figuring out where the rest of these roots are. So let's test it with synthetic division. I'll put a 2 out in front, 1, 2, no, not for this one. If I was dividing by something, then I would have to change it, but not when I'm evaluating the function there. So put a little line between these last two. Kenny, help me out. Zero, good job. <laughs> so, 1 and 0 gives me a 1, 2, 4, 8, 5, 10, and 0. Yay. So, that's cool. So, I know that this is actually a factor of this polynomial. So, P of X... If x equals 2 is a root, what's the corresponding factor? If x equal 2 is a root. x minus 2 is the factor. Excellent. And what that tells me is I can rewrite p of x as x minus 2 times this polynomial. What's this polynomial? Perfect. x squared plus 4x plus 5. And that won't factor anymore. This would actually have complex roots if you're looking for it. So this graph, will, this graph is only going to cross the x-axis once, and it's going to be at x equal 2. But 
I don't expect you to follow me completely on that conclusion. Take a look at it, though, when you get a chance. Oh, thank you. Yeah, let's do number 38. So another practice problem with synthetic division. Synthetic division, as you can see, is, is more important than you might have thought coming out of your Math 1150 class. It's more than just a shortcut to finding the quotient of a polynomial. Is it x plus 2? Thank you. Now, for this one, you got to take account of the fact that not all the coefficients are listed in the numerator. Plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 16 over x plus 2. So... Thanks for the request on 38. It was on my agenda to do this one. What number is going to go out in front? Negative 2. So negative 2, and then 1, and a bunch of zeros, and then a minus 16. Why don't you see what you can come up with? All right, Kenny, somebody stole your thunder here. <laughs> it's all right. So, cool. We see that it actually goes in evenly. Can anyone tell me what polynomial these numbers represent? So constant, what would this represent? What's it saying to me? Mm. Uh, it's saying x plus 2 is a factor, sure. And it also tells, tells me that the quotient here is x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. So both of those are conclusions you can get out of this. You could do this one a different way if you factored it. Uh, let's take a, a super quick look at that. If you factored the numerator, it would factor as x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 4. And then the numerator factors again here as x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x squared plus 4. Now, of course, it's a unique polynomial that's going to work out so nice and neat like this. But you can see that x plus 2 is a common factor, and you can cancel that out. If you multiply x minus 2 times x squared plus 4, you get exactly what we got up here. So, nice. Nice. Now, Let's try and use this information, stuff like this is a root, to actually make some progress on a polynomial. So a problem like 58. We'll do a little bit more of this in section 3.4. Let's take a look at 58 now. We've got p of x is x cubed minus 5x squared minus 2x plus 10. And they tell us that c equals 5 is a root. Now, if c equals 5 is a root, that would mean that x minus 5 would be a factor. But it also means that p of 5 should be 0. Let's just make sure that p of 5 is 0. And that's going to give us some more information about our polynomial. We should be able to find all the roots from there. So 
if I want to test that 5 is a root, I'll do that by synthetic division. 1, negative 5, negative 2, and 10. So, thank you. Oh, whew. <laughs> yep, 0. 0, 1, 5. Uh, and we got another 0. That's okay. What's 5 times 0? Zero? 0. And then negative 2. And 5 times that, negative 10, and 0. We expected 0, and we got 0. So that's cool. But what does that tell us? It tells us a little bit more here. It tells us that P of X can be written as X minus 5 times something else. Times what? What's this polynomial that I have down here? x squared minus 2. And that's great. That's perfect because now if I wanted to find all the roots, I can do that. If I have this times this equals 0, well, I know where this equals 0. That's x equals 5. So the question is where does x squared minus 2 equals 0? Move the 2 to the other side. Plus or minus the square root of 2. Beautiful. So once you get that first root, then you can factor. Nice, really nice. It depends on what you're being asked for. It says, show that the given values of C are zeros and find all the other zeros. So find all the other zeros would be both of these parts. So yeah, they'd be looking for that. We'll finish it up with problem number 60. I'm going to do a couple of problems next time from to finish this section. We're almost caught up, not quite. Problem 60 gives us P of X is 3X to the fourth minus X cubed. Minus 21x squared, minus 11x, plus 6. And they tell us that x equals, where is it? Uh, x equals negative 2 and x equals 1 third are roots. Well, we're going to do the same thing here that we did with the previous problem. Let's try and factor our polynomial using this information, using the fact that I've got two roots here. In fact, x equal 2 corresponds to x plus 2 as a factor. And this corresponds to x minus 1 third as a factor. So we'll attack this with polynomial or synthetic division. Out in front, I'll put a negative 2, 3, negative 1 negative 21, negative 11, and 6. Kenny, you're up. Yeah, thank you. All right. So <laughs> 0 there, 3, negative 6, 14, negative 7, positive 14, positive 3, negative 6, and 0. Yay! What does that tell me? That tells me I can rewrite P of X as X plus 2 times 3X cubed minus 7X squared plus 7X, excuse me, minus 7X again. So... Yeah, this should be a minus there. Photoshop. Beautiful. Minus 7x plus 3. And now I don't have to worry about this x plus 2 part here. I can just work with this part. So I've got one more factor here, and that's x equals 1 third. So let's try working with that. 
I'm going to put the one third out in front. I'm going to get you out of here before you know it. My coefficients now, I'm not going to use the full polynomial anymore. There's no point. I've already reduced this. Let's use 3, negative 7, negative 7, and positive 3. Everyone's trembling because there's a one-third out in front. It's going to work out good. Yeah. All right. Michael, somebody, or thanks for filling in. So 0. 3 times one-third is 1. Add, we get negative 6. Multiply, we get negative 2. What do we get when we add here? Negative 9. And when we add, negative 3. Boom. Got a 0. Wow. Pretty crazy here. So what's that telling me? It's telling me that this polynomial right here can be rewritten as P of X as X plus 2 times x minus one third times Taylor. What's this what's this equal right here? What's this telling me? Constant x x squared. I'll help out. Three x squared minus six x plus nine. Minus nine. Oh thank you. Minus nine. Beautiful. Minus nine. Uh, and the rest of this you can factor. You can use the quadratic formula to solve where this equals 0, or if you're lucky, it'll factor. In fact, I think you can factor out a 3, and you'll be in good shape. But let's call it a day here. And let me give you some homework. Uh, I'm going to skip the long division part because I'm sympathetic to you. I don't like long division that much myself. This is section 3.3. So let's do a bunch of synthetic division problems. Uh, let's do 29 through uh, 45, 29 through 45. And I always got to rush to put it in the end because people start closing their books. And we've done a little bit more than that. Let's see, 53 through 61. All right, I have to finish up some more on that next time, but have a great weekend. See ya.